huge job, great opportunity for him. As soon as he walks into that football club, he'll realise um, how big it is. And it's a huge club. I felt the same, but I was, I'm English, so I knew the history of, of, the, of the football club. He's going to learn about it. He's a very intelligent man. I'm sure he goes in there with a clear idea of what he wants to do. He's going to have now to the end of the season to have a good look at this group of players and decide who he wants to keep and what he needs in the transfer window. Um, they're not getting relegated, Laura. I mean, they've got too many good players for that. Um, and the league's... There's too many bad teams in the league. I mean, for me... For me, Bournemouth from Forest are relegated. Um, so is this one place up for gab- grabs, and it won't be uh, it won't be Aston Villa. So he needs to progress that football club. I think he needs to take him mid table, um, not necessarily now, um, but in the future they need to be looking towards the top six, and and that's what the fans demand. Cup runs as well. You know, they should be very competitive in in the domestic cups, and I think they're capable of doing it. I think they've got the finances to be able to do it. And they've got the man now, they need to give him the time and they need to trust him. Tim, <clears throat> difficult question, but what's been the problem? Because take away the, the, the Brentford game, you know, which was the first game mm. when uh, Stephen's departure, where they were excellent, there's, there's been an unbelievable lack of consistency. And I'm looking at the team. Goalie's fine, back four solid enough, midfield, and you've got boys like Ings, Watkins, Bailey. They should be doing a lot better. Yeah, absolutely, and, and hence why <coughs> Stephen lost his job. I, I still think it doesn't make Stephen Gerrard a bad manager. Mm-hmm. It just didn't work out for him at the football club, and it obviously did at Glasgow Rangers, and I'm sure he gets another opportunity. It's all about getting the maximum out of the players, and, and Stephen would admit himself, he's a big boy, that you know he didn't get the maximum out, he didn't get the results, and you live and die by results as a, as a Premier League manager, and uh, unfortunately they've, they've decided to make a change, but... Look, they, it's all about getting the best out of the group. So Unai now will, will decide. I think Stephen was undecided. You could tell by his team selection. Mm-hmm. You, look, I, he had a few injuries in, in difficult areas. Um, but I think you need to try and find out what your best team is and stick to it a few times. Um, and obviously Bondia was there. You got Cortinho. You got do we play mm-hmm. Ings and Watkins? You know, all these decisions. And he never really stuck to it. Difficult to stick to it when you keep losing football matches because I've been there myself. You keep tinkering with it. Um, but... From t- when you take a step back and look in, you probably think you, you probably need to try and find your best side. As in soon terms, as in terms of the appointment itself, <clears throat> were you surprised by it, or is that as good? I don't mean is that as good as Villa could have got. Is it? Well, I do mean that. Is it? Or could they get Pochettino or somebody like that? Or would that have been very very similar? I think Pochettino for me would have been a good choice uh, I think Unai is obviously a good choice as well never worked out for him at, at Arsenal but mm-hmm. you know he's, he weren't too bad you know did did alright Unai uh, there you know as, and, and I think he's he looks like he's mild mannered he looks like he's going to sing from the same sheet yeah. as the as the owners and, and the sporting directors and I think it's a really good fit. Um, one thing's for sure, and he'll learn very quickly. Get that, get the fans on side there, and it, and it's like an extra man on the pitch. Um, if results start going the other way, then it can turn. You know, you need to be a very strong character to be out to play in front of the crowd um, at any big club um, when things are not going well. Who should be his captain, Tim? Oh, well, it's that. It's up to him. He sees them every day, Laura. You know, it's, it's, from the outside, it's very difficult to make that decision. I think you give it to Martinez, didn't he? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, last game. Last game, and, and Mings has had it. You know, McGinn's had it. McGinn, you know, so he needs to stick to one. I think re- it's really important. But I think with the foreign managers, it's not as important. Mm. You know, it seems to be very important to to English or British managers. Yeah. But you know. They usually give it to the most experienced player, don't they, the, the foreign managers? But I think it's important that he's strong and his coaching staff are strong more than the more than the captain. Yeah, OK. Unai Emery goes into Aston Villa today. It's day one of his new job. A couple of games against Manchester United to get him kick-started over here in England. Mm, Premier Brighton, League 6th of November, yeah. That one is at Villa Park against Manchester United. Then they go to uh, Old Trafford in the EFL Cup and then Brighton at the Amex. So, obviously, um, Brighton coming off a massive win against Chelsea in the Premier League last week. Um, so yeah, it's uh, yeah three massive matches to get him started. Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods, Monday to Wednesday morning, six till ten, on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.